prior to seeing the data from the Fourier and Odyssey trials, there was a little bit of a concern that PCSK9 inhibitors could either increase the risk of diabetes or raise glucose levels in people with diabetes. And the reason for that is because in large population studies, people with genetic mutations in PCSK9 receptor actually um, had higher rates of diabetes. And so there was a concern because these uh, PCSK9 inhibitors kind of recapitulated what was happening in that gene mutation from a cholesterol standpoint, would it also recapitulate the risk of diabetes? Fortunately, we haven't seen that in either of the two large outcome studies from both Fourier and Odyssey for evolocumab or alirocumab. So what we've seen in both uh, large trials have done recent sub-analyses in the diabetic subgroups. And we've seen two important findings. First, that alirocumab and evolocumab are as effective in reducing the risk of cardiovascular events in people with and without diabetes. We've also learned that alirocumab and evolocumab do not increase fasting blood sugar, nor do they worsen A1C, either in normal patients, patients who have prediabetes, and patients who have diabetes. So not only do we have data now for really good efficacy for cardiovascular disease reduction for both evo and alirocumab, we also have a really compelling safety profile for those for both patients with and without diabetes. Fortunately, the PCSK9 inhibitors that are available to us now, evolocumab and alirocumab, are both incredibly safe. And in fact, in both studies, the biggest adverse event were just injection site reactions. We're here at the EASD meeting, so specifically talking about patients with diabetes. What's interesting is that both in the placebo and the treated subgroups in the Odyssey trials, alirocumab had much lower injection site reactions in those with diabetes compared to those without. And uh, the think thinking here is that patients with diabetes are already kind of familiar with how to give themselves injections and uh, therefore may have lower injection site reactions than our patients without diabetes. Um, those injection site reactions occur at very low frequency, less than 2% generally, um, and are quite mild and generally well tolerable. So, Fortunately, we're able to say that these are both very safe drugs uh, to lower cardiovascular disease risk. There's really only been uh, two studies that have shown PCSK9 inhibitors raising blood glucose. First, the GLAGOF study, which was uh, an analysis of evolocumab in patients uh, where they followed a uh, coronary uh, plaque, there was a signal for increased blood sugar in those patients. Fortunately, in the larger population of patients that have been studied with evolocumab, including the more than 10,000 patients in the Fourier study, that has not ended up uh, panning out. So I think it's pretty safe to say that evolocumab does not raise blood sugar. There was another meta-analysis that was published last year that largely included data from the SPIRE trials in patients treated with bocosizumab, and there was a statistically significant increase in fasting blood sugar in patients treated with bocosizumab. Again, bocosizumab isn't exactly the same as evolocumab and alirocumab, and so it seems to be probably just restricted to that particular agent, which we don't use. So for the PCSK9 inhibitors that we do have available to us, alirocumab, evolocumab, we don't see any glucose raising effects. More and more we're learning as we evaluate the results of both of the outcome studies that most patients benefit the same on a relative scale from evolocumab and alirocumab. Therefore, what drives benefit or absolute benefit or really the value of these drugs is the patient's absolute risk of cardiovascular events in the first place. So if we're thinking about who to treat with PCSK9 inhibitors, we really wanna look for the highest risk groups for cardiovascular events. In general, that includes patients with diabetes. So people with diabetes and cardiovascular disease are a particularly high risk subgroup of patients with cardiovascular disease and should be treated with PCSK9 inhibitors if their LDL targets are above goal according to guideline. Other high-risk groups that we think about, patients with polyvascular disease, patient with uh, cabbage surgery, or 
other high-risk features that would increase the risk of recurrent events, all of those patients really should have aggressive lipid lowering according to guidelines, and many of them will need a PCSK9 inhibitor. EASC is really a great conference, and as a cardiologist, I think it's really important for us in the field to be thinking about how do we better understand how to treat our patients with diabetes, and how can we start to use the cardiovascular disease risk-lowering drugs that have been proven in diabetes in our clinics, such as the SGLT2 inhibitors and the GLP-1 agonists. Some of the most exciting data that I've seen presented so far are the ongoing data presented from the Pioneer Program for oral semaglutide. I think as cardiologists, we often are somewhat reluctant to prescribe injectable therapies for our patients with diabetes, and many of our patients don't wanna to have to use an injectable medication. So having an oral medication in that class, I think is potentially really exciting and may help lower the barriers to entry for patients for GLP-1 therapy.